When Paul expressed his desire to marry Sabina, Iroma's heart sank. She couldn't bear the thought of her son marrying someone she didn't approve of. I won't be alive to see you marry that girl, she said firmly, her eyes filled with sadness. Paul was torn between his love for Sabina and his devotion to his mother. Once upon a time, in a small village called Obom in the eastern part of Nigeria, there lived a young man named Paul. Paul was a bright and cheerful boy, the only child of his parents. His father had passed away when he was still very young, leaving his mother Iroma to raise him all by herself. Iroma was a strong and determined woman. Despite the hardships she faced, she worked tirelessly to provide for herself and her son. She sold food in the village market, waking up every morning to prepare delicious meals to sell to the villagers. Paul admired his mother greatly. He watched as she toyed day in and day out, never complaining, always with a smile on her face. He knew how much she sacrificed for him, and he was determined to make her proud. As Paul grew older, he excelled in his studies. He was a diligent student, always eager to learn. He dreamed of becoming a doctor one day, of helping others and making a difference in the world. Finally, the day arrived when Paul received his admission letter to the University of Nigeria to study medicine. Iroma could hardly contain her joy when she heard the news. Tears of happiness streamed down her cheeks as she hugged her son tightly. Paul, oh, my son, she said, her voice trembling with emotion. This is a dream come true. I am so proud of you. Paul smiled back at his mother, his heart overflowing with gratitude. He knew that this was all thanks to her, to her unwavering love and support. Throughout his high school years, Iroma had always been there for Paul, guiding him, teaching him about life and the importance of making the right choices. She warned him about the dangers of bad company, of getting mixed up with wrong crowd. She urged him to stay focused on his studies, to never lose sight of his dreams. And Paul listened. He listened to his mother's words of wisdom, taking them to heart. He knew that she only wanted what was best for him, and he was determined not to let her down. As the day of his departure for university drew near, Iroma sat down with Paul one last time. Remember, my son, she said, her eyes shining with pride. You are destined for greatness, but greatness comes with responsibility. Stay true to yourself and never forget where you come from. Paul nodded solemnly, his resolve firm. He promised his mother that he would make her proud, that he would work hard and persevere, no matter what challenges lay ahead. With a heavy heart, Iroma watched as her son boarded the bus to the university. She stood there, waving goodbye until the bus disappeared from sight. A lone figure against the backdrop of the setting sun. And as Paul embarked on this new chapter of his life, he carried with him the love and wisdom of his mother, a beacon of hope guiding him through the darkest of light. Little did Paul know the adventures and challenges that awaited him in the University of Nigeria would shape him in ways he could never have imagined. But one thing was certain, no matter where life took him, he would always carry his mother's love in his heart, a constant reminder of who he was and where he came from. As Paul settled into the university life, he worked hard to keep up his studies he attended his classes diligently, took thorough notes, and spent long hours in the library studying. Despite the challenges, Paul remained focused and determined to succeed. Meanwhile, back in the village, Iroma continued to work tirelessly to support her son. 
she woke up before dawn each day to prepare meals for the villagers her hands moving swiftly as she chopped vegetables and stirred pots over the fire she knew that paul's education was the key to a better future and she was willing to do whatever it took to make sure he had every opportunity to succeed as the years passed paul excelled in his studies he made friends with his classmates joining them in various school activities and clubs his warm smile and kind heart endeared him to everyone he met and soon he became one of the most popular students on campus then in the year before his final year paul met sabina sabina was a beautiful and intelligent young woman with dreams of becoming a lawyer from the moment they met paul was captivated by her grace and charm they spent hours talking and laughing together sharing their hopes and dreams for the future before long paul and sabina fell deeply in love they walked hand in hand around the campus their laughter ringing out like music in the air they studied together in the library their hands bent over textbooks as they exchanged notes and ideas as their relationship blossomed so did their dreams of future together but amidst the joy of their newfound love paul and sabina faced challenges of their own paul worried about how he would be able to support sabina and himself after graduation why sabina struggled with the pressure of her studies and her own insecurities despite the obstacles paul and sabina remained steadfast in their love for each other they encouraged and support one another lifting each other up in times of need and as they navigated the ups and downs of the university life together they grew stronger and more determined to overcome whatever obstacles lay in their paths back in obom village iroma continued to pray for her son's success every day she hoped and prayed that paul would come out of the university with flying colors making her proud beyond measures in the village iroma's friend's daughter ebere often came to help her at home and in the market iroma grew fond of ebele blessing her with hopes of a good husband in the future time flew by and soon paul completed his final exams becoming a university graduate before returning home to obom officials from the school honored paul as the best student of the year they even sponsored him to travel abroad for his master's degree after his youth service when paul shared this news with his mother iroma's heart overflowed with gratitude she thanked him for his hard work and for bringing so much joy and blessings into their lives she also thanked god for always being there for them a year later paul completed his youth service and returned home to see his mother this time he brought sabina with him from the moment iroma set her eyes on sabina her mood changed she couldn't seem to warm up to sabina despite paul's assurances that she was a very good girl and he wanted to marry her when paul expressed his desire to marry sabina iroma's heart sank she couldn't bear the thought of her son marrying someone she didn't approve of i won't be alive to see you marry that girl she said firmly her eyes filled with sadness paul was torn between his love for sabina and his devotion to his mother he tried to reason with iroma explaining how much sabina meant to him and how happy they were together but iroma remained adamant unwilling to accept sabina into their family as tensions rose between paul and his mother sabina stood by his side offering him love and support she knew how much iroma meant to paul and how difficult it was for him to go against her wishes but she also believed in their love and hoped that in time iroma would come to accept her as part of their family but as time passed Paul couldn't shake off the weight of his mother's disapproval of Sabina. He feared upsetting her after all the sacrifices she had made for him. So, early one morning, 
Sabina packed her bags and quietly left for Enugu, hoping to avoid causing any more trouble for Paul and his mother. Months later, Paul received the opportunity to pursue his master's degree in the USA. Excited about his future prospects, he threw himself into his studies and life in a new country. But amidst the whirlwind of exams and new experiences, he slowly forgot about Sabina. Their contacts dwindled and eventually they lost touch. Back in Obom village, Iroma had already begun arranging for Paul to marry Ebere, her friend's daughter. She was determined that Paul should marry someone she approved of, someone from their village who shared their values and traditions. She made it clear to Paul that if he didn't marry Ebere, she would not accept anyone else. Paul didn't fully understand how serious his mother was until he returned home from the USA, now a successful medical doctor working at a hospital in the city of Asaba. Each time he brought a woman home, hoping to introduce her to his mother and seek her approval, his mother would reject them. Despite his protests, Iroma remained steadfast in her belief that a barrier was the best choice for him. She argued that the city girls were not suitable partners, too exposed to the world and lacking in traditional values. Tired of the constant rejection and pressure from his mother, Paul finally relented. He agreed to marry Ebere, knowing that it was futile to argue with his mother's wishes. The wedding was held in grand style, with the entire village celebrating the union of Paul and Ebere. But deep down, Paul couldn't shake the feeling of sadness and regret. He knew that he had married Ebere not out of love, but out of a sense of duty to his mother. And as he settled into married life, he couldn't help but wonder what might have been if he had followed his heart and stayed with Sabina. After the grand wedding celebrations, Paul and Eberi returned to their matrimonial home in Asaba. Paul's mother was overjoyed to see her son happily married to Eberi, fulfilling her heart's desires as they settled into their new life together. Paul, being a wise young man, sat down with Ebere to have a heartfelt conversation one evening. He explained to Ebere that since they hadn't courted before marriage, they needed to take things slow and get to know each other better. Ebere nodded in agreement, grateful for Paul's understanding and patience. As time went by, Paul and Ebere began to bond and grow closer. They shared their hopes, dreams, and fears with each other, building a strong foundation for their marriage. Despite the initial doubts, Paul found himself falling in love with Ebere more and more each day. The marriage seemed perfect to Paul. They laughed together, supported each other through challenges, and cherished the moments they spent together. However, one thing was missing, children. Paul and Ebere had been trying to conceive, but it wasn't happening as quickly as they had hoped. Paul reassured Ebere they needed to give it time and not to worry, as children would come when the time was right. Despite the initial disappointment, Paul and Ebere remained hopeful and continued to enjoy their life together as husband and wife. They went on adventures, explored new places, and shared countless memories together. As they awaited the arrival of their little ones, Paul and Ebere found comfort in each other's arms, knowing that their love would see them through any challenges that lay ahead. Their journey as husband and wife continued, filled with love, laughter, and the promise of a bright future ahead. As time passed, Paul found himself increasingly busy with work, often traveling for his jobs whenever he was away. Ebere would call her old friends who led her down the wrong paths. They turned Paul's house into a hub for their immoral activities, indulging into fornication and other inappropriate behavior. Ebere wandered the estate, seeking out affairs with both young and married men, driven by his desire for money and excitement. 
Despite Paul's love and financial support, she remained discontented and sought fulfillment in the wrong places. There were instances when Paul's friends visited and a bearer would seduce them, betraying her husband's trust. However, whenever Paul returned, a bearer would put on a facade, pretending to be the loving and faithful wife. But a bearer harbored dark secrets that nobody knew. She had been a prostitute since high school, living a life of deceit and immorality. Despite her outward appearance of respectability, she carried the weight of her past sins, concealing them from the world. As time went on, Eberi's action took a toll on her health, and she discovered that she could never bear children again. Despite this, she was determined to keep her secrets buried, unwilling to face the consequences of her actions. Each time she returned to the village, she put on a mask of virtue, hiding her true nature from those around her. But deep down, she knew that her past would always haunt her, a constant reminder of the choices she had made. One evening, Paul noticed that something seemed off about his wife Ebere. He had observed this for some time, but kept it to himself. Finally, he decided to ask her if she was okay and if she was feeling sick. Ebere assured him that she was fine. But Paul couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. The next morning, while Paul was at work, Ebere's friend came to visit. They talked about how they weren't ready to settle down and be tied to a man. Instead, they wanted to enjoy life and attract rich men. They chatted. Ebere began to feel dissatisfied with her marriage to Paul. She confided in her friends, expressing regret over getting married to him and lamenting the fact that she couldn't have children. When Paul returned home from work, he sensed that something was wrong. Ebere seemed distant and unhappy. He decided to reach out to his mother, Iroma, and share his concerns about his wife's behavior. He hoped that his mother could offer some guidance and support. Iroma listened attentively as Paul poured out his heart to her. She reassured him that she would talk to Ebere and try to understand what was troubling her. She promised to visit them by weekend to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Ebere. As the days passed, Paul anxiously awaited his mother's visit. He hoped that she could help bridge the gap between him and Ebere and restore harmony to their marriage. Meanwhile, Ebere wrestled with her feelings of discontentment and regret, unsure of what to do next. Two days before Paul's mother was set to arrive in Asaba, Paul received a call from his mother asking him to pick her up from the park. Despite being busy, Paul agreed knowing that it was important for his marriage. Little did he know what awaited him at home. Meanwhile, Ebere had made arrangements with a stranger to visit her on the same day Paul's mother was due to arrive. She didn't know about her mother-in-law's visit and had no intention of letting her interfere in their affairs. On the fateful Saturday, Paul rushed to the park after work to pick up his mother. Unknown to him, Ebere was at home with her secret lover, indulging in their illicit affair on their matrimonial bed. As Paul drove home with his mother, Ebere and her lover were lost in their passion, oblivious to the approaching danger. When Paul and his mother arrived home, they heard nothing but silence. But as they entered the house, they were met with a sight that shattered Paul's world. There in their bedroom lay a bere and the stranger, entangled in each other's arms. Paul's heart sank as he realized the depth of his wife's betrayal. He called out in anguish, summoning his mother to witness the scene before them. Roma's heart broke as she saw her son's pain and her daughter-in-law's disgraceful behavior. She had recommended Ebere to be Paul's wife, 
believing she was a good match for him. Now she felt nothing but disappointment and shame. Instead of begging for forgiveness, Ebere remained defiant, showing no remorse for her actions. She claimed that her marriage to Paul was a sham and that she regretted ever marrying him. She declared that Paul was not her type of man, dismissing him without a second thought. As the stranger made a hasty escape, Paul and his mother stood in stunned silence, unable to comprehend the betrayal before them. The once happy home had been shattered by deceit and infidelity, leaving behind nothing but pain and heartache. As a baby packed her belongings and prepared to leave, Paul's mother couldn't believe the audacity of her daughter-in-law. She regretted not allowing Paul to choose his own wife, realizing now that she had made a grave mistake. Paul, overcome with emotion, cried openly in front of his wife and mother. He expressed his hurt and disappointment, telling a bearer that she would have rejected his mother's offer if she had known what kind of person she truly was as paul left the house to clear his head his mother unleashed a trade of insults on ebere disgusted by her actions and betrayal she realized that ebere had been pretending to be someone she wasn't only interested in the money she could get from paul suddenly paul's mother remembered the warnings she had received about ebere in the past Someone had told her that Ebere was unfit to be her son's wife, that she couldn't bear children and was involved in unsavory activities. Despite dismissing these claims at the time, she now saw the truth in them. Heartbroken and filled with regret, Paul's mother sobbed in the sitting room, wondering how her son would react to the news. Just then, Ebere emerged from the room with her luggage, announcing that she was leaving and suggesting they retrieve the bride price from her father. After leaving Paul's house, Ebere found herself with nowhere to go. She reached out to her friends for help, only to discover that they all had moved away and started families of their own. Some even rejected her cause calling her bad luck and refusing to offer any assistance. Ebere felt utterly alone, realizing that her world had crumbled around her. With no other options, Ebere made the difficult decision to return to her village. As she journeyed back, she couldn't shake the feeling of despair and isolation that weighed heavily on her heart. Meanwhile, Paul arrived home to find his mother deeply saddened by the event that had transpired. She begged for his forgiveness, explaining that she had only been looking out for his best interest. Despite his pain, Paul found it in his heart to forgive his mother, knowing that she had acted out of love for him. They shared a heartfelt embrace, and his mother assured him that he could find happiness with any woman he chose. Together, they decided to retrieve the bride price from a Beres father's house so that they could officially end their marriage and move on with his life. The following week, Paul sent two of his uncles to a Beres father's house to retrieve the bride price. With that, their marriage came to an end and Paul was finally free to pursue his own happiness. As Paul moved on with his life, he remained grateful for the love and support of his mother. Together, they faced the challenges that life threw their way, knowing that their bond was unbreakable. As Paul moved on with his life and career, he found himself opening up to new possibilities and opportunities. Two years after his marriage to Ebere ended, Paul met a beautiful lady named Sarah. They quickly fell in love and decided to get married. Together, they built a happy and fulfilling life, filled with love, laughter, and endless possibilities. But for Ebere, life took a different turn. Despite her attempts to start anew, she found herself facing one hardship after the other. Eventually, 
she fell ill with a deadly disease and despite her family's effort to save her they spent all they had worked for to no avail Ebere's life came to a tragic end leaving behind a legacy of regret and sorrow back at paul's house at asaba one evening he sat by the window gazing out at the peaceful garden outside it had been two years since Ebere left and life had taken a new turn for him he had found love, found love again this time with sarah a kind and caring woman who understood him like no one else as he watched the birds and the flowers swaying in the gentle breeze paul couldn't help but feel grateful for the second chance as happiness that he had been given sarah had brought joy and laughter back into his life and he was thankful for her every day baby are you okay sarah's voice interrupted his thoughts as she walked into the room concern etched on her face paul smiled warmly at her yes baby i'm fine just lost in thought for a moment sarah came over and sat beside him taking his hands in his in hers i'm here for you whatever you need i'm here to support you paul squeezed her hand feeling a wave of gratitude wash over him thank you baby i don't know what i would have done without you they sat in compassionable silence for a while enjoying each other's presence paul felt a sense of peace wash over him knowing that he had found true love once again later that evening as they sat down to dinner paul couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment wash over him sarah had prepared his favorite meal and the warmth of her smile filled with happiness baby i have something to tell you sarah said her eyes shining with excitement what is it paul asked curious i'm pregnant sarah exclaimed her face lighting up with joy paul's heart skipped a bit as he took in the wonderful news he couldn't believe that he was going to be a father this time with the wonderful woman he had loved more than anything in the world tears of happiness welled up in his eyes as he embraced sarah tightly i'm happy baby i can't wait to start this new chapter of our lives together and so my dear friends paul's story had come full circle from the pain and heartache of his failed marriage to the joy and happiness of finding love again paul had learned valuable lessons about life love and forgiveness and as he looked forward to the arrival of his baby paul knew that he was truly blessed with sarah by his side he was ready to face whatever challenges life threw his way knowing that their love would see them through it all remember to cherish the love and happiness that comes your way and never lose hope for even in the darkest of times there is always a glimmer of light waiting to guide you home the story of paul and Ebere teaches us the important lessons about life and relationships parents should not make choices for their children when it comes to life partners or careers instead they should support their children in making their own decisions and encourage them to follow their hearts it also teaches us the importance of surrounding ourselves with positive influence and avoiding bad company a various friends led her down a destructive path ultimately causing her downfall it's essential to choose friends who have our best interests at heart and to live a good life and honest life. Moreover, the story highlights the importance of being truthful and honest in life. A bearer's deceit and betrayal led to her downfall, while Paul's honesty and integrity led him to find true love and happiness. In conclusion, we all should learn from Paul's and Ebere's story 
that it's essential to make good choices in life, surround themselves with positive influences, and also strive to be truthful and honest. By doing so, we can build a bright and fulfilling future for ourselves, filled with love, happiness, and endless possibilities. And so, my dear friends, remember to follow your heart, choose your friends wisely, and always stay true to yourself. And with that, our story comes to a close. But remember, the magic of storytelling lives on, waiting to whisk us away on a new adventure where the wonders of imagination know no bounds. Goodbye for now, and may your dreams be filled with joy, wonder, and endless possibility. Thank you so much for watching. Please kindly comment, share, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting videos.